Hi friends, in this video I'm gonna introduce this 12 volts 18 watts switching power supply. With some modifications you can even get other output voltages and currents as well. It's a single layer PCB board. I designed a schematic and PCB using Altium Designer and sent the Gerbers to PCB way to get high quality fabricated boards. For now, let me explain this briefly, then in the next step I will go through the schematic and PCB. This is the main input connector, here is the input protection, MAV, Fuse, NTC, this X2 rated capacitor and this common mode choke are, are for noise reduction. This is the rectifier part, these components belong uh, to the snubber circuit. This is the controller chip DK124. Interesting aspect about this chip is that it doesn't need any external supply or an auxiliary winding. This is the flyback transformer. This optocoupler provides an isolated feedback path to the controller. This potentiometer is used to precisely adjust the output voltage. This inductor and these capacitors are part of the output circuit. Finally, this cute is a small red LED to indicate the proper circuit operation and also acts as a small dummy load to stabilize the output. I think it's enough for the introduction. Stay tuned for the next step. All right, this is the Altium Designer environment. You can download the latest version of the Altium, including a free legal license from the YouTube video description. Then after you activate your license, you will see your name here, the same as me. Before I go to the schematic and PCB, I see a very good tutorial here, how to define different clearance. Actually, I didn't know about this. I will go and look uh, look at this video later on. This is the schematic diagram, PCB layout and assembly drawings. Let's come back to the schematic. As you know with each part each with each project I also publish an article so I have explained everything regarding the schematic in the article. Check the article link in the YouTube video description. Before I go to the PCB this component is very interesting because I see this optocoupler, this part number in almost, I can say more than 90% of the switching power supply, this PC817 optocoupler. Let's go to Octopart and see what's going on about this component. And I can select the first from the search results. And this is the specifications of the component. I think this is the cheapest optocoupler with linear, almost a linear behavior, which is suitable for switching power supplies. Okay, that's why I see this part number in the majority of power supplies. Let's come back to the PCB. All right, as you see, it is a single layer PCB, bo PCB board. All components are through hole. This is the mains input and the mains input protection stage. Here is the bridge rectifier, snubber and the controller chip. In some chip products, and I can say in all chip products, they always remove this protection stage and directly connect the mains to the input of the uh, bridge rectifier. I highly recommend you, whatever you do, never ever remove the fuse because when this chip dies, for whatever reason, even if you use some discrete components, I mean external MOSFET, when it dies, it shorts the mains. And we can assume when, the, when you have a short circuit on the mains voltage, what will happen? Even it could be, it could be fire. So never ever remove the fuse, okay? This is a high voltage circuit and because I have 
some high voltage uh, tracks here I have also implemented this board cutout or uh, creepage areas to follow the uh, IPC standards okay it's a good practice that you also follow this creepage and implement these creepage areas in your switching power supplies in your own designs as well here is the output stage optocoupler as I said an isolation gap or a creepage area under the mic under the optocoupler as well let me go to 3d you see that if I show the bottom side change the color you see the tracks and the isolation gaps and I decided to use a polygon for the ground if I go to 2d as you see I have used a polygon instead of a ground track for the output side I prefer this in this kind of implementation for the ground path especially at the output not for the input just for the output okay I think it's enough for this stage let's go and test the board all right welcome to the test bench I will perform two tests on this power supply first I will uh, put the power supply under the maximum load using this DC load then I will check the output voltage stability and I will measure the voltage drop then I will measure the output noise using this oscilloscope so the first thing I'm gonna do is to put the multimeter probe on the output connector so it says exactly 12 volts okay so before I continue you might you might ask why I'm measuring the output voltage using this multimeter because when I apply apply the maximum load these wires will introduce some voltage drop and if I read the voltage just from here it's not accurate I should remind you that this DC load can also measure the voltage in the independently uh, using two another two wires from the back side however because I have this multimeter also so I decided to use this multimeter and uh, uh, instead of that two external wires so the uh, load is 100 milliamps now let me increase it to 1.4 for example 1.4 amps and uh, before that uh, the output voltage is 12.00 okay and there we go it says the output voltage drop the drop of the output voltage is around 50 or maximum 60 millivolts uh, so 50 millivolts or 50 is the output voltage drop drop under the maximum load now I will measure the uh, output noise using the oscilloscope okay to measure the output noise I have put this ground spring on the probe's head and I put the probe on times 10 now I put the probe on the output connector first I will measure the output noise under no load and this is the output noise with no load it's around 20 millivolts peak to peak now I apply the maximum load So it says around maybe 50 or 60 millivolts peak to peak and I should say the majority of this noise does not come from the output I believe the majority of this noise is the EMI noise and that's why always you see that in industrial devices they put the switching power supply inside a metal enclosure for this to block or to prevent this EMI noise to affect other parts of the circuit or other parts of the device so anyway i hope you like this video uh, and build this project and have fun see you in the next video